The persecution that started in the Al-Aqsa Mosque shifted to the Gaza Strip, and the child killer Israel launched an airstrike on Gaza. Tensions rising with Israel's attack on the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. What can occupied people do but resist? Hamas, which has been the symbol of resurgence in Israeli-occupied Palestine for years, is a movement that Israel often uses as an excuse for its aggression. Let's get to know Hamas, which has been mostly declared a scapegoat in the Western media and has made a name for itself in the latest 11-day attacks in Gaza under 10 headings. The movement al Mukawama al-Islamiyah, or Islamic Resistance Movement, popularly known by its acronym Hamas, was officially founded on December 14, 1987. Hamas is part of the Palestinian branch of the Muslim Brotherhood, and its founders include prominent figures from the Palestinian Muslim Brotherhood movement, Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, Abdel Aziz al-Rantisi, Salah Shahade, Isa al-Nashar, Abdel Fattah Duhan, Ibrahim al-Yazuri. But among all these names, Sheikh Ahmad Yassin deserves special mention. Sheikh Yassin was born in the year 1937, in the village of Al-Jura in the town of Al-Majdal, in the historic Palestinian city of Ashkelon. He lost his father when he was only three years old. At the age of 10, due to the establishment of Israel and the Arab-Israeli war that followed, he and his family were expelled from their village and settled as refugees in the Gaza Strip. At the age of 12, he suffered a spinal cord injury in an accident. Sheikh Yassin was therefore forced to live in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Sheikh Yassin studied religious sciences at Egypt's famous Al-Ashar University. While in Egypt, he met the Muslim Brotherhood. After returning to Gaza, he started working as an Arabic teacher. In 1973, he founded Al-Mujama Al-Islami in Gaza. In the years that followed, the center grew and began running mosques, charities and schools. With its welfare-enhancing services, this center became the center of Ahmad Yassin's political and cultural activities for the next 14 years. Through this center, Sheikh Yassin reached tens of thousands of young Palestinians and shaped their outlook on life. In the mid-1980s, Israel, alarmed by his activities and growing popularity, arrested Sheikh Yassin. However, he was soon released in exchange for the release of Israeli soldiers kidnapped by Palestinian groups in South Lebanon. In 1991, Sheikh Yassin was arrested again and sentenced to life imprisonment. But in 1997, he was released, this time on the initiative of King Hussein. Sheikh Yassin was martyred seven years later on March 22, 2004, at the age of 66, in a mosque bombed by an Israeli helicopter. Hamas can be described as an Islamist movement. This is also evident in the pledge that the movement declared eight months after its founding. Article 1 of the pledge, which is full of verses and hadiths, defines Hamas's program as Islam. Article 2 also declares that Hamas is part of the Palestinian branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. According to the 8th article of the Covenant, Hamas's goal is Allah, its model is the Prophet, its constitution is the Quran. Its path is jihad and death in the way of Allah is the highest of ideals. This is a familiar Islamist Muslim Brotherhood formulation in the Arab world. The Covenant gives an idea of Hamas' ultimate goal. According to it, Hamas is a Palestinian resistance movement and a link in the chain of struggle against the Zionist occupiers. This struggle began in the 1930s when Iz ad-Din Qassam, a religious scholar, began his struggle against the British Mandate and the Zionist settlers. In honor of this cleric, this military branch of Hamas was named the Iz ad-Din Qassam Brigades. According to the Misaka, Hamas aims to raise the flag of Allah over every inch of Palestinian land. Therefore, the liberation of every inch of Palestine from Israeli occupation is Hamas's founding goal. According to Hamas, this is a religiously legitimate goal. This is because, according to the 11th article of the Covenant, the land of Palestine is an Islamic waqf and has been endowed for the future Muslims until the Day of Judgment. Therefore, no one can renounce any part of it. Article 15 of the Covenant states that the day any part of Muslim land is occupied, jihad becomes a personal obligation for every Muslim. Both Israel and Palestine are occupiers. In this case, jihad against Israel becomes an inevitable religious duty. As declared in the 13th article of the Covenant, Hamas considers all attempts, proposals and international conferences to end the Israeli occupation of Palestine as a waste of time and futile efforts. There is no solution to the Palestinian problem other than jihad. Although the Muslim Brotherhood is an Egyptian Islamic movement, it quickly found supporters in Palestine, thanks to Egypt's position as a center of education and culture in the Arab world and Palestine's proximity to Egypt. On the other hand, the Muslim Brotherhood could not spread to a wide popular base in Palestine in the first period. The most important reason for this was that secular pan-Arab nationalism was stronger among Palestinians since the 1940s. As a matter of fact, the Palestinian groups that adopted the secular ideology would take the lead in the struggle against Israel until the 1980s. 
The most famous of these groups was undoubtedly the movement Tahrir al-Watani al-Palestine, or the Palestine National Liberation Organization, more popularly known as the Fatah, which Yasser Arafat founded and led until his death. But after the military defeat at the hands of Israel in the War of 1967, secular pan-Arab nationalism gradually weakened, while Islamism gained strength throughout the Middle East and even the Islamic world. The Palestinian Muslim Brotherhood also gained strength at the grassroots level in Palestine starting in the 1970s. In Palestine, the Muslim Brotherhood avoided a military confrontation with the Israeli state because of its grassroots weakness. This weakness led the Muslim Brotherhood to set its primary goal in Palestine as the Islamization of society. Israel could only be confronted with an army of religious people. Hence, this period was called preparing generations for jihad. First of all, there was the Muslim Brotherhood, which had a much stronger base among the Palestinians through social welfare and religious services. In 1987, a third was added to this dual structure, the military structure. Secondly, by the end of the 1980s, the Fatah-led Palestine Liberation Organization, which was leading the Palestinian struggle, was showing signs of exhaustion. In fact, four years after Hamas was founded, the PLO began peace talks with Israel. With the peace agreement signed in Oslo in 1993, the PLO officially recognized Israel, and Israel recognized the PLO as the representative of the Palestinian people. The Muslim Brotherhood therefore took up the military struggle against Israel, which Hamas and the PLO were about to abandon. Finally, the Muslim Brotherhood was not the only Islamic movement to lead the military struggle against Israel. Hamas was preceded in 1981 by the movement for Jihad al-Islami fi Palestine, or Islamic Jihad in Palestine. The movement set its goal as the establishment of an Islamic Palestinian state within the pre-1948 borders of Palestine and declared its complete rejection of political negotiation and its adoption of military struggle to achieve this goal. The establishment of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad movement eventually pushed the Muslim Brotherhood to adopt or prioritize military struggle. The real catalyst for the creation of Hamas was the Palestinian uprising known as the First Intifada, which would last for nearly six years. Hamas was founded exactly six days after the First Intifada began. As the French say, much has changed, but much has remained the same. As part of the Oslo Peace Accords, the Palestinians were granted some autonomy, albeit limited, in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. But this autonomy remained largely on paper. In both the West Bank and Gaza, Israeli settlers remained where they were. The Palestinian Authority had no management rights over them. Israel even tried to expand settlements in the West Bank. In response to the failure of Oslo, the Second Intifada erupted, which lasted for nearly four and a half years. Perhaps the best picture of the Palestinian leadership's impotence vis-à-vis -vis Israel during this period was given by Yasser Arafat, the legendary figure of the Palestinian struggle and president of the Palestinian Authority. Arafat spent the last two plus years of his life in his Ramallah compound under siege by the Israeli army. He was only able to leave Ramallah after his illness progressed. He was first taken to Jordan, but died a short time later in a military hospital in France. An important step back for Israel came in 2003, Ariel Sharon, then Prime Minister, proposed a complete Israeli withdrawal from Gaza, including settlers. The proposal was only implemented in 2005. In the same year, Hamas decided to participate in the elections for the Palestinian Legislative Council, which it had previously refused to take part in. In the elections held on January 25, 2006, Hamas won 44% of the vote ahead of Fatih and formed the government with a parliamentary majority. However, in the months that followed, Fatih steadfastly refused to hand over power to Hamas. The struggle between the parties culminated a year later with Hamas taking full power in Gaza and Fatih in the West Bank. Immediately after Hamas took power in Gaza, Israel and Egypt closed all borders with Gaza and the Gaza blockade began. The Gaza blockade is still in place today. In the West Bank, Israel's military presence continues. Israeli settlers are systematically opening up new areas for settlements. The latest attempt by Israel was in Sheikh Jarrah, which triggered a new wave of protests in Palestine. On May 1, 2017, Hamas announced its new vision and policy document in Doha, Qatar. It is possible to observe significant changes in the language of the document. For example, while the covenant announced in 1988 was full of verses and hadiths, it is noteworthy that there are no hadiths or verses in the new document. However, the new vision and policy document is not without religious references. The first article of the document declares that it takes Islam as its reference and that Islam defines the principles and goals of the movement. According to the new document, Zionism is a racist, aggressive, colonialist and expansionist project. Israel is the playground of this project. As such, it must be opposed by all means, including military intervention. 
According to the document, Israel is completely illegal and exists despite the rights of the Palestinians. There is no question of recognizing the legitimacy of this Zionist entity. Hamas does not accept any alternative to the full independence of Palestine. However, it has made an important concession by signaling that it can accept the establishment of an independent and sovereign Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital as an intermediate step. Israel declared Hamas a terrorist organization about two years after its founding, and the United States declared it a terrorist organization a decade later. Largely under pressure from Israel and the United States, the European Union, Canada and Japan designated Hamas as terrorist in its entirety, while Australia, New Zealand, Paraguay and the United Kingdom designated only its military column as terrorist. Brazil, Egypt, China, Iran, Norway, Qatar, Russia, Syria and Turkey do not recognize Hamas as terrorist. In December 2018, a US proposal to recognize Hamas as a terrorist organization in the United Nations General Assembly was rejected. What can occupied people do but resist? Symbolic movements of resistance in Israeli-occupied Palestine for years 